Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this week's High Note Show. Thanks for joining us every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jonathan, this is Nick. This week we're gonna be talking about all things Bluetooth. So Nick, tell us some of the advantages and disadvantages of your opinion uh, about Bluetooth. Well, as we all know, uh, everybody uses Bluetooth. It's everywhere, it's in portable speakers, it's in your car, but you know, on the other side, in the hi-fi world, it's known as a little less quality, it's sub-CD quality. So whenever you're streaming from your iPhone over to a nice, powered speaker, you're not going to get the full potential of it. And so, you know, that's where I think the, the main problems are. So the convenience, is, obviously is very convenient, disadvantage is maybe you're going to compromise with sound quality. How has the industry responded to uh, the advantages and disadvantages you see with Bluetooth? All right, so, you know, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. A lot of people have different codecs, and what a codec is, is the way that, you know, a device, something like this, breaks down the information in a song, so just the data, and it has to go through a data pipeline. And so logically, you'd have to break it down in smaller pieces, and so that allows the transfer rate to speed up. Now, the other side of it is this, the headphones are reassembling the information in a more accurate manner. So those are some different ways that people have started doing it. So now we obviously have Bluetooth AptX. Tell us a little bit about Bluetooth AptX and how is that different from traditional Bluetooth and what are some of the benefits? All right, so traditional Bluetooth is a little lower quality, sub-CD quality. If you're streaming from your iPhone to a pair of headphones like this, even though these have AptX, your iPhone can't send the information properly. So you're looking at about 256 megabytes per second for the nerds out there, but for the rest of us, it's not the best CD quality, or at CD quality. So whenever people introduce AptX, or even better, AptX HD, that allows something like this or you know, some Android phones or you know, other devices to transfer at CD or, in the case of Aptex HD, above CD quality. Which is, which is great, obviously. So now you have the convenience of Bluetooth, but now you're not compromising when it comes to sound quality. Exactly. What are some things that uh, you need to have in order to take advantage of Bluetooth Aptex? So Aptex, and going back to Aptex HD, requires something in both the device and the receiver, as I said before. So if this case, this uh, Sony Walkman has AptX HD in it, so it's allowed to, it can send the signal out. These headphones only do AptX, so it allows you, these allow you to get to just CD quality even if this is better. So something like uh, the Audio Engine HD6s, they're capable of doing AptX HD. So if I sent this over Bluetooth, uh, you could get, you could play 24-bit, uh, 48 kilohertz, uh, high-res files, so that's about what, you know, Tidal, uh, streams, and others like that. So it's, it works really well, you get the convenience, and you also get, you know, great quality. Awesome. We recently had the opportunity to review the Cambridge Alva turntable, which has Bluetooth AptX built in, uh, as you can see over here. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the things that we experienced as we tested the Cambridge Alva turntable and how the Bluetooth AptX was able to perform. All right, so the, the Alva actually has the Aptex HD, so it's got the full, it's allowed, it allows you to transfer it 2448. And some people said, hey, putting Bluetooth on a turntable is so stupid, Bluetooth is awful. Well, in reality, it sounds amazing. So we actually connected that, the Alva TT, to the Cambridge Edge, uh, their integrated amplifier. Mm -hmm. and, or no, no, it was their Edge NQ, excuse me. And so the Edge NQ is their network streamer that allows you to use uh, Aptex HD. So they're, both of those are capable. And honestly, you get a lot of the detail that you would never expect from Bluetooth. But at the same time, you get the physicality of a record. Uh, you know, you get those little pops and cracks. And you know, overall, it's, it was very impressive. And also, the, the table allows you to hardwire if you choose to. So I think it would be really great in an environment, you know, a small apartment or you know, a place where you don't have much room. You can just put the, uh, put the table on the other side, have your speakers playing, or get a nice set of headphones, and uh, you can walk around the room you know, with your headphones on, not worry about disturbing somebody that's sleeping or yeah, you know, anything like that. So it's great because you have the, obviously you have the flexibility of listening to it, like you said, traditionally through a wired setup, but then also right. now the advantage of through Bluetooth without necessarily compromising the sound quality that you would have experienced through traditional Bluetooth in the past. Exactly, right? yeah. So yeah, we were absolutely blown away. We were really impressed with how the Alva performed with Bluetooth Aptex. I think we'll see a lot more uh, products coming out, obviously integrating Bluetooth Aptex into their ecosystem throughout, yeah. and which will obviously create a lot more convenience for a lot of different products and a lot of different use cases. So uh, obviously this month we are giving away the Cambridge Alva turntable, a $1,700 value. So be sure to enter to win. 
on Facebook. Also like us on Instagram and to get an extra entry for the giveaway. And tune in at the end of the month uh, as we'll be announcing the winner. So Nick, thanks for joining us this oh, week. Thank you guys. It's been a lot of fun to talk about Bluetooth. Uh, make sure you tune in again next Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern, same time. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for tuning in.